Hello everyone and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. I'm so excited to start this, that break. It felt like it was too long. Episode 1, The Lost Turnabout. Yes, let's get started. What? <sighs> How'd I get into this mess? What is happening? That's far enough. You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? What have I done wrong? Why is the judge here? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But, but I'm just, just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. When did the judge become a monster? I don't remember that from the last game. September 8th, 9.08 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. What? Why is that our ringtone? What a nightmare. I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway, you think? Huh, looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... Whoa, that guy's creepy. It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. Text went too fast. I'm hoping... Uh, did I turn automatic text on somehow? A few minutes later. District Court, Defendant Lobby number one, okay? Ouch, my head. It's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? Uh, who are you? Good morning. Ah! Uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? <laughs> My head is sort of hurt, so he did, he bashed us with the uh, fire extinguisher. Roger that. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Oh wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? Thought maybe I'd done something wrong? But what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix, right? Life in my hands? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. Uh, bird. Not guilty. Oh, we lost our memory. Oh, no. Oh, this is probably like their way of letting you do a tutorial. Okay, that makes sense. I'm, a, I'm on board. Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange, and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, uh, sorry. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh... Who are you? Oh, Phoenix. <laughs> There are so many better ways you could have gone about trying to get that information. What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean, I, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just... Well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? Uh, so he doesn't even know who he is. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? I like this girl. I, I, if she's 
our new Maya. I don't know that I'm that upset about it. I'd prefer to have the actual Maya, but so far, I, I like her. Hmm, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Yeah, I bet this is their way of, like, rationalizing being able to explain, like, oh, this is where you raise an objection, and this is how you cross-examine a witness. That that makes sense. Uh, someone please tell me this is just a bad dream. I get the feeling this is one dream that I won't be waking up from. And I am district court, courtroom number two. Is it the same judge? Please be the same judge. Yes! Court is now on trial for the in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Oh, this guy. Where's Edgeworth? This isn't right. I want Edgeworth. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? Unfortunately, no. I guess not. <laughs> now then, are you ready? Uh, no. No, I'm not. I don't know who I am. This is mistrial. Uh, sure. I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a sec. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this tra trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Uh, actually, <laughs> I have. Oops. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. Oh boy, murder already? <laughs> What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. Oh dear. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well, Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. I, haven't I tried, like, a bunch of cases by now? Okay... Who are you again? The prosecution calls Detective... <gasps> Gumshoe! Here we go, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. It's Gumshoe! He'll help us. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant. She works under me, so, you know. You work under that detective? Yes, sir, and while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Well, I mean, he's about to screw you over pretty bad, so I don't, I don't know about that. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Expose Park. The victim was on the local, one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. Dust, ha, ha, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Oh, wait. Oh, court record. Give me. It's my all-important badge. It shows that I'm a defense attorney. Cell phone. I found this in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. Time of death, 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Caused broken neck. Body was also cover covered in bruises. Found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. All right, they specified nearsighted. I'm assuming that's going to be important. Okay. What do we have? <gasps> we have profiles. Uh, Maggie Bird. Uh, my client. The only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. I don't think I've ever seen Maggie spelled that way before. 
Uh, Dustin Prince, the victim and a policeman. It seems that he was dating the defendant, Maggie Bird. I wonder if the bird thing, uh, there's probably a reference that I don't get and that's why it's that way. Uh, the prosecutor for the case lacks presence, <laughs> generally bad at getting his point across. Detective at the local precinct in charge of the initial investigation. Ah, yes, the, the, uh, this autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. I, I'm kind of suspicious of that. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. Oh, okay. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo one added to the court record. Hold, uh, now then, I recall yet yesterday's preliminary hearing. A very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I guess. Hold on. We got a picture. What do we see? All right, people looking odd. Wouldn't they have seen Maggie Bushimo? I mean, unless maybe that's what they're going to say. Hmm. All right, no, I, don't, I don't see anything useful there. Mr. Wright, is your head on to right today? There's a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Oh. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually... Um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you th through this. Oh, she is gonna be our Maya. Yes! Like I said, I would, I would have preferred to have actual Maya, but... That's okay. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yup, info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed here, sir. You can look at the court record by pressing the R button. R button, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? <laughs> the R button, yeah. If someone tells you to press the R button, you know what's up. It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. <sighs> Is that what's gonna happen? Mr. Wright! I'm just, I'm just talking to myself. Please don't, uh... Please don't tell me. I'm, I'm sure I'll probably find out before it, it, too long, but... That, that, that was a rhetorical question. Court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. Uh, uh, sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I'd better check the court record and see what I can find. What was it again? The R button? Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Uh... Glasses. Yeah. Take that! That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed the killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. Wait. And he held onto them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. <sighs> yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the crime scene are at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. Oh boy. A coincidence, she says. Ugh. <laughs> Your honor. I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more. And this evidence is very decisive. Oh crap. Very well, let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Detective, decisive evidence, okay? Oh, this music! It's very sad. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. How do we know that? Oh. I don't like saying it, but it clearly... It was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. Ugh, crap. And this is, is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Wait! Ah, uh, okay. Why, this is... Yes, I can see her name is clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood, the court accepts it into evidence. 
I I see what I see what they did there. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. Or did he? But 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 I've already told you those glasses aren't mine. How do you explain his dying message? It wasn't his dying message. It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witness's faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witness... Witnesses all hide things from the court. Which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. Oh, poor gumshoe. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, your honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be all right. Decisive evidence. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body. Hold it. Yeah, hold it. Um, about those glasses, do you have any proof that those belong to my client? The lenses are for nearsightedness and are almost the same strength as hers. Ah, crap. Wait, wait, almost? I feel like almost the same strength as hers should be kind of suspicious. Like, why would her primary pair of glasses not be exactly her prescription? Even the frames look kind of like the ones she's wearing in her ID, pal. Alright, that that's true. Hmm, what should I do now? Uh, continue pressing. Hold it! Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Or, um... Do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Or, um, uh... The dart and sand rubbed out, any trace of the fingerprints or anything else? So what you're saying, detective... Is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients. Um, something like that. What, what, why? I see. Hmm, so there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing. I could totally feel it down in my gut. Uh, during his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. Hold it! Now, you're sure he was pushed, and that's how he fell. Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. Uh, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I don't want to believe it, but... Was the name that of my client? No. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name Maggie, sir. That's wrong! Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Mm, he's got a point. Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't ha me. I know the picture says Maggie, but... When she mention mentions it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. Better check the court record again. So what do I... Alright, hold on. Don't give up. Keep that fighting spirit going. I'm glad you're all pumped up, but... I really want to see your special move, sir. My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present evidence? Uh, enlighten me. Oh, I guess, um, about this presenting evidence. Okay, when you're listening to testimony, you can compare it with the court record. If you do that, you're sure to find contradictions in the witness's statement. Contradictions? Well, there are many reasons why testimony might contradict the evidence. The witness might be lying, or maybe they're just mistaken. Uh-huh, and? You still have no idea what I'm talking about? When you find the contradiction, open the court record to the item you need. And then I present that evidence, right? 
You got it. You can also present people's profiles as evidence. Oh. Oh. With so many items, make sure you present the right thing. Hmm, sounds complicated, but I'll give it a try. You're pretty good at this. Wow, being praised by a pro. I don't know what to say. Uh, even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body. Yep, during his date. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. Was it? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name. May ah! I'm so glad they said that thing about presenting profiles. Father, I would I probably would have presented that picture like in on every single statement. Da, da, da. Da, uh Phoenix? Yeah, uh, you're right there, pal. Uh, what what is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. There we go. What a rush. Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. <laughs> Forgot his voice. When are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Well, well, where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's, uh, name is, uh, Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record, which I just learned about five minutes ago. Well, what? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! Looks like the bird caught the cat napping. <laughs> Phoenix. Whoa, what, what's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh! How about that? I hadn't even noticed. What? <laughs> this is this guy. But, 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 but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. Uh, weren't they like super close? May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover? If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to have not known her name. No! This is very true, Mr. Payne. G guess, Your Honor. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? I g guess, I'm quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please justify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. Listen to Maggie. Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, I mean Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had brought bought over two months ago. I should know because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Wait, what was it? Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. Wait, wait, what? What? What is even valuable here? Uh, hold it. How do you know about this? Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Bird was a rookie at the time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. They got close, I take it. Actually, I was supposed to go too, but I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. Oh, is it because he got his pay cut from the last game? <laughs> if only I had gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, uh, nothing, sir, really. Anyway. Uh, talk about marriage. Marriage? But wasn't that victim eight years older than her? What, you saying a guy's gotta marry someone the same age as himself, pal? No, that's not what I meant at all. It's had to come to you and Dustin are only a year apart, you know. Uh, I think this fella has a ways to go before marriage. <laughs> Mind your own business, pal. Oh, Gumshoe, I didn't mean it. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday. The day of the incident? You mean September 6th? Yeah. 
the victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day, and since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. Ah, I remember when I was young and in love. Uh, oh, it was a jolly time. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. Better than when he was a monster at the beginning of this game. Maggie, I mean, Officer... Yeah, present. What was it? You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because I, uh, I'm her boss and I gotta watch out for my subordinates. But even what she was going to give as a present, isn't that going a bit too far? Hey, pal, watch what you say. I know everything that happens under me. If someone so much as scratches their... Uh, I really don't need to know that much. Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. I agree. Maybe even if this witness has a crush on the... Oh, I didn't pick up on that. Oops. I guess that makes sense. Okay, that's why he wanted to go on that trip. That should not be the point of the discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a second. Why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. Wait, what? I think the good detective is about done here. Uh, Alright, what, what was it? Over two months ago. Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Um, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. I was gonna ask. Oh, I see, a baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. A baseball glove, hmm. Press further. Just now, I believe you said that present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? The glove was custom made. Yup, that's what I said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to the case yet. Yes, it would seem that there is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to the case? I feel like it is. Like... Like, why would you order a custom glove for someone and then kill them? I'm gonna say yes, but I don't- I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it's relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes, bluffing to the max. Oh, no. Now, this is the Mr. Right I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. I'm impressing people. I feel like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Very well, if you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to the court! Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it, sir. It's, uh, rather yellow, is it? Is it? Is it? A birthday present from Maggie to the victim. It was custom made. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had to special order it. Yep, that's right. That, and one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. Is clear the victim and the defendant were involved with each other? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. First looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernails. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. With this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Oh, 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 court record. Hmm, yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Aha! He's left-handed, because that's a right-handed uh, catching glove. Uh, because typically, I'm trying. I'm trying to think back. I've I've not played baseball since like little league, but I'm pretty sure because I'm right-handed and I catch my like my baseball glove was left-handed. So I'm assuming it, for him it would go the other way. Aha!
Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Writing on the ground. All right, I don't know how we're going to use that. The handwriting. Okay, hold it. But can you really determine handwriting based on a sample written in the sand? Yeah, this is why amateurs are amateurs. We're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. Hmm, I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Your Honor. So, what's the result of the investigation? Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm. All right, well, hold that. All right, we'll do we'll do a slightly longer episode today. Uh, I don't know that we'll get through the whole trial depending on how long this goes. Uh, but we'll do, we'll go do slightly longer for the first episode. So in the end, you couldn't confirm it. Hey, don't you look down on us. I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I've heard, never heard that before. Me neither. Nor I. I never heard anything like that at the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up anyway. Victim's pointer finger. Hold it. His pointer finger. You know, the one you're always pointing and waving around in people's faces. <laughs> Don't tell me it bothers you. Every time you do it, I have a mini heart attack. It's like you're trying to kill me, pal. In any case, you examine the victim's index finger, correct? Yeah, we figured we should be something on his finger if he had written that. If he had been writing in sand. Hmm, and the results? Okay. And what does that prove? Well, it proved that he did write that name with his own finger. And yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. Scratches and skin that were caused by him writing on the ground, okay. Scratches on his skin? Yep, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible! Sure is, that's the power of scientific investigation. They're so small that we had to use a magnifying glass, like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it. We used one of those and that's how we found them. I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. Unless we could confirm the victim wrote the name with his right hand. Okay, okay, let's hold. Are you absolutely sure? I believe in the power of science. Hmm, I wonder if my evidence is solid enough to counter with. Listen to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. That the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange, sir? If Dustin really wrote that message with his right hand, do you think I would have gone through that much trouble to get him his present? Present? What about it? I figured it out! Okay. Yeah. Point your finger, yep. Right hand. <laughs> yes! Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um, never really thought about it, but uh, it's really yellow. And that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Nailed it! Left-handed. Why, well, you're absolutely right! This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom-made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Well, uh, no. So, detective. Which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? No, that's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that it was his... Well, well, wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! <laughs> this is... That is... I mean, I ob object... You already objected. You can't object with an objection. <laughs> no, world. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Order, order! Alright, I think that's where, where we'll call it an episode. I don't know how much longer this is going to go on, so uh, we'll split this up. Uh, 
doing something a little bit different uh, this time around. We're going to do episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, Tuesday, right now, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we have uh, Final Fantasy VI Brave New World, so uh, consider checking that out. So, well, I'm going to do slightly longer episodes, that way we're not doing this like a year from now. <laughs> Although I could keep playing these games forever. Uh, I do have, obviously, the, the third game in this, in this trilogy, and uh, I was able to track down the, uh, the Miles Edgeworth games, uh, both of them. So, as long as you guys are still interested in uh, watching me play uh, Ace Attorney games, I'll keep playing them. Uh, so let me know what you guys are, how you guys are feeling about this uh, in the comments and all that stuff. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.